policies, and how can we make sure every student feels safe and protected in our schools? And so we'll start, this time we'll start with the week of the opening statements to start with James and then get around to each of you starting at the first one. James. Uh, thank you for the question about immigration. I refer to him as 45, because uh, I don't think he deserves anything else. <laughs> uh, one of the things that we were very vigilant about in Arlington Public Schools was taking a public stance. Uh, I have taken pride in being a voice for underserved communities and underserved families. Uh, and that doesn't just have to do with the color of your skin or how much money your parents make. A lot of it we're seeing is targeted at folks who aren't involved in the process, some because of their immigration status, and some because when you come to this country, uh, this political process that we have in Arlington is foreign to a lot of folks. How active and passionate it is getting involved uh, with the process and letting folks know uh, what you think without fear of repercussion. I am so proud of my county, I mean, my school board colleagues, as we stood at the last meeting and took a stand together and issued a statement along with the superintendent to ensure that every family in this community knew that we stand with them, we protect them, and we would not allow them to be unfairly targeted uh, for deportation or, or, or arrest. Uh, this is something we're on record for as a group, and this is something personally that I, I have stood for uh, throughout my service in Arlington. Thank you. Thank you, James. More. If you don't mind, can I say something? Sure. Absolutely. Okay, I'm done. No problem. Um, I'm glad that ATS issued the statement and the letter that they did. That's absolutely the right thing to do. And we should uphold, hold, uh, uphold that sentiment in our schools and promote that environment within from our staff and also our fellow classmates. We need to follow whatever we can do within the legal parameters. But within our walls, we need to provide that welcoming and safe environment. We can do that in many ways, but um, we have to continually communicate that to our communities and in their native languages, frequently and sincerely. In the meantime, we also have to create the environments within our own schools that are welcoming to our, each other. And we need to bring students of different backgrounds together more often so that they can overcome some of the social barriers and perspectives that they have that may not be so accurate and that we can have a genuine understanding of each other and a, a true tolerance, not just an enforced tolerance, the true acceptance of each other. I am so concerned for our students. Um, I, I, at my church, we've had um, Know Your Rights um, programs. I was so proud that APS put out a statement, but I actually asked APS to do more. Um, I wanted to see something uh, that goes on more than just a website so that our students could truly, and their parents can truly understand um, what their rights are. We need to work collaboratively with our, our, um, our community, our churches, our libraries, um, everywhere we can to let our families know what their rights are. I've heard horrifying stories from students who say they're afraid that their parents will not be there to pick them up at the bus stop. Um, we do have to do a better job of helping these families feel safe in our community. And our schools need to play a big role and putting a statement out is just the start. I'd like to see us do more as a community um, and, and try to figure out ways to have that message be more than just a statement. Um, 